Today, I want to talk to you about propagation from a node. Specifically, I am going to be working with a Monstera Albo node. We are about to cut to a video that I recorded three weeks ago when I unbox my node and show you how I set it up. But there have been some changes and I've made some adjustments to the method that I'm using since recording that video and I wanted to go ahead and add those on. This is actually my first time uh, attempting to propagate from a leafless node. Most people will probably say, don't try it with a Monstera Albo node, but here I am. I ordered this from a Facebook group called Jumanji John Plants. Pretty dry. Oh wow. Okay. This aerial root feels pretty dehydrated. Not entirely sure that will make it, but we'll see. But the variegation on this, if you can see it, and I don't know if you can, it is a little tiny piece of a Monstera Albo with a very long, dry aerial root. So I'm gonna show you what I do with this. There seem to be multiple ways to do this successfully. The biggest problem that people seem to have with propagating from a node like this is rot. Rot on the aerial root, rot on the edges. When you're working with something this small, obviously if you start having rot, you don't have a whole lot of room there to just trim it off. You can lose the entire aerial root and still be successful, so I'm less worried about that. I am gonna leave it on and just see what happens. I'm gonna use the perlite method, but you can also use sphagnum. Some people try and propagate them directly in water. You just have to find what works for you. I've watched a couple of videos by LB. She seems to have success with perlite, so I am gonna try that method. Understanding completely, however, that it may or may not work for me, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna do the best that I can. I've got Starbucks cups here in various sizes. I'll probably use this Trenta because it'll give plenty of room for this root in there. You could use a, you could use anything. There's no holes in it. You could use a nursery pot. I didn't have time to order any clear nursery pots and I saw a lot of people using Starbucks cups. I have no shortage of those. I've got perlite, sphagnum moss, and I also have uh, this container here. I got it at Ikea because it was really cheap but still tall enough to put a cup like this inside of to make a humidity chamber. But I've got some perlite in here and I'm gonna start by getting the perlite wet. I'm just gonna add a little water and sort of see how it feels. It's not enough. I'm trying to make just enough wet perlite to fill this cup up. So that may have been too much water. No water coming out enough wetness to stick together. I don't know if you can see how wet that's leaving my hand. I'm feeling like that might be a little bit too wet. Maybe I got too much water. So I'm just gonna add a little more perlite. still forming together nicely. Um, however, my hand is not as wet, so I think this might be a better consistency. Rot happens when it's too wet. I've got my cup, I've got my node. I'm gonna start with the root down in here. If I didn't have an aerial root, I would simply fill the cup up, the node on top. The nice thing about the aerial root is that I know what side I should face down. Try not to make too big of a mess here. This is the consistency, the wetness that I'm looking for. I can squeeze the perlite, 
kind of makes a little formed ball, but it's, it's not so wet that my hand is drenched. The nice thing about the clear containers is that it allows you to sort of monitor if any roots are growing. So I'm filling this all the way up. Just go ahead and get the rest of that in there. It turned out to be the perfect amount. Got my aerial root spiraling around down here in the perlite. I know it's just sitting right on top here. So the key to success in propagating this way from what I've seen from the research that I've done is extremely high humidity. Some people will just put some plastic wrap over this. Some people will just put the lid on the Starbucks cup. I'm going to use a tub because I just feel like that will help me keep a better eye on the humidity. While you can sort of see the cup steaming up, I just don't feel as confident with my ability to maintain appropriate humidity in such a small closed off container. So I'm just gonna use this cup and I'm going to use a tub. It's just whatever you have around and whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm going with this method because eventually, hopefully, if things go well, I will get some growth on this, a leaf should come first. After I have the leaf, I want to be able to continue keeping it in a high humidity environment. Figured if I'm sitting this down in here and keeping it closed and humid, I've got room to sprout leaves, still keep it under high humidity and not have to take it out of here or repot it or put it in something different. I can just leave it in this. This is where the sphagnum moss comes in. I am making a mess. And to that, I'm just gonna add some water. So you can see I'm just getting the moss thoroughly wet in here. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe a little too much water. I'm going to put my cup with my node right in the box. I'm going to close it up. I'm going to put it in a sunny window. Just a couple of things. It's important that you have a clear container or at the very least a clear lid. You need to allow the sunlight to get in there. You'll know that it's getting enough light and enough warmth because it's going to fog up here inside the box. Open the container once a day to let a little fresh air in and I will be checking to make sure that the, the moss is still moist. When the perlite looks dry, I'm going to use just a spray bottle and mist it. It can take a month, two months to see any activity. I will probably periodically take the node and the aerial root out just to look at it and make sure it's not rotting anywhere. You should be able to see if you're getting rot on the node because the node is up and it's visible. And if you're getting rot, if you've got enough room, you can just trim that off, let it dry out for 24 hours maybe, and then put it back in. But if you're having rot, that means you've got too much moisture. I feel like it would be really difficult to have so much water that you're ending up with rot with this method. If you start with a healthy node that has no rot, you should be okay. If I did happen to run across any rot or any issues, I would definitely do an update at that time. So, All right, so after I recorded the video, uh, I did exactly like I said, I put my humidity box in a west facing window and left it there. And I was getting nice condensation. You can see here, this, this is what you're looking for, the condensation coming down the inside of the box. Um, I open the box every day, air it out for, you know, 10-15 minutes, and then closed it back up. And I decided that I would take the node out of the perlite once a week 
just to really inspect everything well and check for rot. On week two, when I took my node out of the perlite, I found the aerial root to be rotting. It was mushy, it smelled bad, and I wish that I had thought to record it, but I just kind of panicked. Uh, I cut it off with a clean sterilized knife. I had to cut it, I'll post a picture. I had to cut it pretty close up to the actual stick um, because the rot was up pretty high. I don't think that the aerial root rotted because of some, you know, mistake or fault of the propagation method that I'm using. You could see from when I first received it, that aerial root was gone. I mean, it was just dried up to a crisp, but I left it on just to see if anything could happen. But in retrospect, it, there was no bringing that back to life. It was dead. It was broken in several places. The outer sheath um, was sort of loose on it. So if your aerial root looks like that, it's probably best to just take it off right from the get-go. Um, so things seem to be going okay. A couple of adjustments I did make. I was just leaving this sit in a bright window that only got some very mild direct sun in the late afternoon. While I was producing, you know, really good condensation, the temperature in my house is 70 degrees. So, you know, aside from those few hours of, of mild direct sun, the temperature in this humidity box probably stayed right around 70 degrees as well, which is not exactly tropical. So that's when I reconsidered getting a heat mat and looking into that. So I ended up ordering a seed starting mat from Amazon. I believe it was $12 and I will post a link to that below. After looking into seed starting mats, I found that it's not something that just you know heats up to a super high temperature like a reptile mat and could possibly uh, damage your node. It just raises the temperature um, a certain amount for the germination of seeds. So it was safe for me to use with a plastic box and without some sort of thermostat to regulate the temperature. So I now have the box sitting on top of this heat mat just to raise the temperature up slightly, make it a little more tropical in there because from what I've read, it seems that people have faster results with a higher temperature. The other thing that I noticed that I hadn't really thought of before uh, was you do want to kind of be careful about how much water you have here in the bottom with your sphagnum moss. I thought it didn't really matter, you know, how wet it was because it's not getting into the perlite and into the cup with your node. But if you have a whole ton of water and you're creating condensation, I was creating enough condensation, you know, that it was dripping down, raining down essentially into my cup with my node. I rang the moss out a little bit more and, you know, I don't know that that would cause a problem, but I didn't want it just raining down into the cup. I wanted to be in control of how much moisture was in the cup. So that's something to keep an eye out for. And then the other thing that I wanted to show that I couldn't before because it was just freshly put in the cup is you can see the condensation on the inside of the plastic cup here. And that's how I keep track of whether or not there is enough moisture in the perlite. If I started seeing this condensation in the cup dry up, that would be the point that I consider misting a bit more water on top of this. I believe that's it for now. It's still just a waiting game. It's only been three weeks and this is a process that can take several months. I'm just keeping an eye on it and making sure there is not any more rot happening. At this point, if I start getting some rot, I might be in a bit of trouble because I don't have a whole lot of room and you can see how how close up I had to cut that aerial root off. I'm keeping a close eye on this to make sure it isn't rotting but nothing's mushy, nothing smells bad, 
So I think we're good. I think, I think I see a tiny bit of swelling right here. I don't think it's gonna be, be able to pick up on the camera, but you know, it's, it's given me some hope that something might be happening. Could just be wishful thinking or my imagination, but I hope that the next time that I have an update, it will be uh, some good news. If anybody has any hints, tips, tricks, suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I am by no means an expert. I just wanted to show you, you know, what I was trying. Until you've got this under your belt and succeeded a few times, it is, of course, you know, a bit of a gamble. There is no guarantee when you receive a node that it's going to successfully grow into a plant, and I just want to reiterate that. But it's a, you know, a fun project for me. It's something that I wanted to try, and um, thank you for watching.